Hello, my name is Mike Rayner, and this video is about how to install Personal Moodle 2.6 Learning Management System into Ubuntu 12.04. When I first started using Moodle, it was difficult to get started, and I greatly appreciate learning how to use Moodle from my desktop. A personal Moodle server is simply a server running in your own private network and not exposed to the public network. The outcomes for this video will be to discuss network settings for virtual machines and VirtualBox. You can use virtual machines like I am here, it just makes it easier to create videos, or you can use two hardware machines, or one hardware and one virtual machine, or you can simply install Moodle on just one machine if that's all you have. Install Git on a Moodle desktop, and then download or clone Moodle, the Moodle repository to the desktop. Create a MySQL database for Moodle on the Ubuntu server. So you've got two machines here, the desktop and the server. And then SSH or Secure Shell into the web server from the desktop and create a Moodle data directory. Then SCP or Secure Copy to move the Moodle files that you've downloaded to your desktop to the server. And then move the files over to a dash var www directory. And finally to run the installer script from the desktop. Now you'll have a config.php file that won't be able to be written to the server because of security settings on the server. So what's going to happen, you're simply going to copy that file and then to the desktop and then send it to the server. And then you may have to install some additional software on the server as needed. And the video will cover that. The requirements would be an Ubuntu LAMP server. That LAMP stands for Linux, Apache 2, MySQL, PHP, a Linux desktop, and an internet connection. This demonstration uses an Ubuntu 12.04 virtual web server with one gigabyte of memory, and Ubuntu 12.04 virtual desktop also with one gigabyte of memory. You can get some additional info at some of these sites, uh, installing Moodle, SCP, GitHub for the Git repository, and SSH for Secure Shell. While I've researched this material, I can't fully verify that it'll work with all combinations of hardware and software out. So I've been asked to include a disclaimer. If you wish, you can stop the video and read disclaimer. That said, this video does not cover all the security issues involved on hosting a Moodle learning management system on a server. Although I've tried to install Moodle in a secure manner as possible, you will have to do further research before exposing your Moodle server to the web or internet. This video demonstrates how to install a personal Moodle server using a desktop, in this case it's desktop 64PP301, and a server. Both of these are virtual machines. Now you may install yours using a desktop hardware or a desktop server, but the video demonstrates a virtual machine installation. Now one of the things that have to happen, whether you're using hardware or virtual machines, is for this installation to work is that both these machines have to be on the same LAN. So in order to do that, we go to the network. If you're using VirtualBox, and there are two choices you can use. You can use the NAT network, create a virtual network, or you can use the bridge adapter. I'm going to use the bridged adapter, and basically what that means is that's going to get an IP address from your router. Your router use dynamic host configuration protocol and will give this machine an IP address. So I pick bridged adapter for the desktop, click OK, and then I'm going to go to my server, Mubuntu 64 PP01S, and on the network there, again, since the other one's bridged adapter, this one has to be bridged adapter. Now both of them will be on the same LAN and both will get IP addresses from your router. One other thing you have to do, which is not demonstrated in this video, is for the server you go to the router and select Reserve DHCP for this server. What reserves DHCP is basically it gives the server the same IP address each time it starts up or fires up. If you have a hardware machine, you should also use Reserve DHCP for the server. The reason I'm not going to show it is different routers do a little bit differently, but that's what you have to have. Actually, a little bit easier than sending what's called a static IP. For this section of video, make sure that both your machines 
are on the same LAN or local area network. In this section of the video, we're going to download a copy of Moodle to the desktop and then it will be installed on the server. So here we have at docsmoodle.org 26 English installing Moodle. If you're using different language, there are different packages for different languages. To get Moodle, we're going to use the Git depository. Actually, it's a little bit easier if you're using a Debian system, which Ubuntu is, to use the installation quick start. It makes a little more sense to me. We're just going to use this text right here to clone or actually get a copy of Moodle from, from gitmoodle.org. Before we do that, we have to install Git on our 12.04 desktop. So in order to do that, go to dash home, open up a terminal. If it's not listed, you just simply type in terminal and it should pop up. So here's a terminal in sudo apt git install git. It's going to ask for your password. Put in a Y for yes, you want to install it. If you want to skip that little step there, you can put a dash Y in front of this after the app get and before the install. So once it's down there, next thing you're going to have to do is decide where you want to put it. In my case, I'm going to do an LS here on the home directory and I'm just going to make a, uh, make a directory. Sorry, DIR. Call it Moodle. Now, if I do LS, there it is. So now I'm going to CD over into Moodle. And once I'm here, I simply go down here to that web page on installation quick start, copy, open up the terminal paste, hit enter, and you'll see the number of objects. Come back when it's fully downloaded. You may want to just check the, uh, make sure there are no errors as you're uh, downloading, because if you receive an error, it might create a critical error in your personal Moodle server. Okay, so now Moodle repository is downloaded. Now the reason uh, we actually download to the desktop instead of to the Moodle server is because if you know, work on your Moodle repository and you're familiar with Git, it's a lot easier to make your changes using tools on the desktop than it would be on a server. In this section of the video, we'll create a Moodle database for the Moodle install. Here I have the desktop running and the server running. If you notice, I could log into the server directly and work from there, but I'm going to work from the desktop and just kind of leave the server alone. So in order to do that, I have to open up a terminal here on the desktop. And then I'm going to use a secure shell, SSH, and Ubuntu 12.04 comes with secure shell, the client version already installed. And so I'm going to use mic at now one thing I'm going to need over here is the IP address of the server because I'm not running a domain name server that keeps the whole local area network simpler. And in order to do that I have to go over a server and get its IP address. And I only have to do this once because I've set reserve DHCP so that it always gets the same IP address whenever it's turned on. So I'm going to go over here, log in, add the password and do an IF config. It's 192.168.1.13 so that's going to be the static or reserved DHCP address of this server from now on. So I'm going to go 192.168.1.13 just hit enter and it says the then of the host cannot be established. I'm going to put a yes. Uh, it'll t you have to print it out. And it asks for the password of Mike at the server. 
Now one thing I'm going to do right here is go back to the server and I'm going to log out of it. Simply go log out, spell it correctly, and leave it without me being logged in. You don't want to have it running a user when it's really not necessary. So I'm going to create a database, MySQL database, and we do that. You key in MySQL dash U for user and it's going to be the root user dash P for the password. It's going to ask for your password, and this is the password that you gave it when you first installed MySQL in uh, Ubuntu. If you have forgotten it or lost it, you might want to uninstall and reinstall, or uh, I'd really forget or really know that it's kind of hard to get to. So here I am in MySQL, and the first thing I'm going to do is create a database, and I'm going to use... You can use lowercase, but I'm going to use uppercase, even though it's harder for me to type that way just to make it a little bit clear we're going to call the database Moodle and everything in uppercase is part of MySQL everything in lowercase is a, a variable or something that you're saying so that's creating a database it says I have an error in my syntax I'm going to hit the up arrow and get that spelling error corrected. Hit enter. So now it says that query OK, one row affected. And so now I have the database. So now I want to grant all, that's create, delete, modify, select, insert, update, delete, create, drop, alter. But I'm going to just basically do it the short way privileges on Moodle dot star two and now I'm going to give it a user that can do this. I'll call this person Moodle user and you're going to have to hold on to this as well as a password. I'm going to give this Moodle user a password so they can get into this database at local host that's the web server identified by your password notice that your password Moodle user and local host are all uh, in single quotes and your password and Moodle user, you can change to whatever they are. And then I'm going to hit a semicolon to see if it works. Works. And we'll set everything ready to go. Flush privileges. Let's show the databases and make sure that it's there. Semicolon. And you'll know, you'll see the database there. I'll quit. You see the Moodle database there, I mean. If you want to, sudo service Apache 2 restart. So Apache 2 will see the, the database too. So it started. So now you have the uh, Moodle database installed. In this section of the video, I've got both the server and the desktop running. Here's the server. Of course, nobody's logged into it. And this is the desktop. What I'm going to do is create a data directory for Moodle to store data in. To do that, go into desktop, type in terminal. We're going to SSH into the server. And that's at mic at 192.168.1.13. Now I'm logged into the server. I'm going to create a data directory. First I'm going to go to var and we'll do an ls see what's in there. I'm going to create a directory called Moodle data. So sudo make directory Moodle data. I think I messed up on the password. 
So now if I do an ls, you'll see there it is, uh, Moodle data. Now if I do an ls slash l, you'll see the owner of Moodle data is root. But what I want to do is I want to change the owner and the group that Moodle data belongs to. So I have to use sudo again, change owner, dash r, recursive, it's directory, www.data, www.data. One is for the owner and one's for the group. And now I have to give the name of the directory, hit enter. Now if I do an ls slash l, you look at it, you'll see that Moodle data has been changed. So now Moodle has a directory in which to store data that the web user can actually write to or can actually, well the server actually does the writing to it, the Apache server. In the next section, we'll move the Moodle files over from the desktop to the server. Now let me log out here. Here's the desktop and the server again. And in this section, what I'm going to be doing is moving the Moodle files from the desktop to the server. Of course, you could have installed, you know, if you were logging in, you could have installed them directly into the server and installed Git on the server, but I'm showing kind of how to use a desktop to do it. So we go to open up a terminal. Let me go to a CD, go to the directory where the files are at. And there they are at Moodle, and I'm going to go to scp slash r for recursive, so we're going to get everything, Moodle to Mike at 192.168.1.13. In this case, I've got to add a colon, and let me add a verbose. And what this verbose does is simply allows you to see what's happening. You may not want to, but if there's an error, it'll show up. And we'll hit enter. Ask for the password. And the files are translating. It's going to take uh, five, ten minutes here to uh, get the files transferred. And the actual place where they're going to, the whole directory is going into the user, in this case Mike, at the server's home directory. And from that directory, we'll move them to where Apache 2 will be serving the Moodle files. So now, files are at the server, but if you notice, we've dropped back down into our desktop. So now we got to SSH into the server to move the files. SSH, Mike, at 192.168.1.13. So now I'm at Ubuntu, the server. What I'm going to do is do an ls, and you'll see that Moodle is there. If I want to have it go to the Moodle subdirectory from the web page, I would just copy everything over to the www directory. But I'm going to make it so that you won't see the Moodle. It'll just directly go to Moodle without you having to type in Moodle at the server. So the way to do that is go to cd Moodle. Go inside Moodle, do, do an ls and see we've got all this. And so we do a cp slash r for recursive, star for, for everything. And then where we're going to put everything is var www. And let's put a v here so we can watch what's going on. Or you can, that's verbose. Of course, I keep forgetting the sudo, but it has to, you have to use sudo here. So the files are being transferred. So let's go over and open up the web page. I'm going to type in 192.168.1.13 and you'll see we're still on the Apache web server. The file that you're actually looking for is index.php. But I'm going to get rid of that index.html because that that is at a higher level. Apache will find that first before it gets to the index.php file. Going back to the, here I'll go cd var www, do an ls, and you see where it says index.html, I'm going to move that, sudo move index, 
dot html that's the only file to move that's the it works file and we're going to move it to home mic if you want to take a look at it ls there it is and um, I can do a sudo and default text editor in is vim and then index.html and you say this is the default web server so I'm going to just close it and go back to web page so let's go over here let's hit a refresh get rid of that install PHP hit a refresh oh one thing I should have done here is uh, sudo service Apache to restart now let's go over and hit the so now we're at the uh, correct position to install okay that's it for this section here's the final step in installing Moodle actually the easiest step if everything's working alright so far we'll open up the web browser and then we'll put in the address of the server 192.68.113 and we'll go to it this is exactly what we saw in the last video section so now we go to language English and let's get the web address Moodle directory var Moodle data var www because that's where we put all the Moodle files click next and we've got improved MySQL native MySQL I click next and now here this is where we we've got to put in some information Moodle user oops, spell this correctly if you don't it allows you to go back and then the password was your password in my case and I'm going to just leave these to default I don't have a, a database port or anything just nothing that complicated click next now it says Moodle main attempt to save your configuration of file in the root of your Moodle installation the installer script was not able to automatically create a config.php file containing your chosen settings okay the situation basically is you can't write into the var www directory so the way we do this here is we just copy this right here we just copy the whole thing right click copy I could use the vim text editor but I'm going to use the get it text editor uh, it's, I have to install the vim but I'm going to try it with the get it text editor open up a text editor GEDIT it cannot use something like LibreOffice Writer and then I'm going to click paste and then I'm going to click save and the place where I'm going to put this is right there in that Moodle directory so that we can find it and it if you call recall has to be called config.php so you have to make sure that that's the right name config.php and click save once that's done that's closed so now that the config.php file has been copied and saved go back to dash home open up the terminal and we're going to go to the Moodle directory do an ls and so there it is and what we're going to do is copy secure copy config.php like at 192.168.1.13 and then a colon here for secure copy and there it shows that 100 percent has been copied we could also put a dash v for verbose so now that that's done we'll ssh back to the server I have to go take a typing class. 
192.168.1.13. So now I'm inside the server doing ls and you see there's the config.php. Now rather than I'm going to actually move it rather than keep it around here because then I could wind up with a lot of config PHP somewhere. Move config.php and it should be a sudo. PHP 2 var www. Hit enter. And if I do a CD or www ls, and you scroll into there, look in there, you'll see a config.php. So once it's there, I'm going to move this out kind of off to the side a little bit here. I'm going to leave it right here for now. Click Next. Everything's good there. So now it says, have you read these conditions and understood them? And basically this is a free software and basically it's distributed without warranty. And you just have to be aware of, you know, somebody attacking your servers and trying to do the best you can to secure them. Hopefully since you're working inside uh, your own personal land that uh, they don't have outside access other than that port 80, which is the web server port. Click continue. Now here we got some things that sh must be installed and enabled that aren't installed on the server. curl, gd, xml, rpc, and intl. And I'm going to install these four, but this last one involves a lot of changes and since uh, basically involves, uh, I think, uh, putting in uh, the next version of PHP that's not in the Ubuntu repository. And that can get a little bit, not tricky, but it just get a little bit. You have to do a lot of running around to get it. So I'm going to install these. So we're back at the terminal now. Move the terminal down here so I can see. So we're still at the server here. And we'll go sudo apt get dash y, so I don't have to hit it. Yes, install. And this is PHP 5 dash curl. Now you can do each one of these individually. If you're good at spelling, you can do them all at the same time. PHP 5 dash GD. I'm going to do two at a time. Hopefully I got it lucky. So those two are installed. And so I'm going to install XM. L R P C and the international I N T L. So I've got the other two installed. Now the op cache enable I'm not going to play with because I've got to install a later version of PHP for that. So now I'm going to do a sudo service Apache 2 2 2 restart so now should have the red out of here and let's go down here to the bottom and click a reload and so the op cache enable is not fully supported but everything else is in the green so we're ready to go so hit continue I think it's time to go get a cup of coffee or something because it's going to be working on your server transferring data between the desktop and the server for a little bit. This is what you're going to kind of see pretty much page after page of this. I'm not sure uh, yeah, I think we'll come back at the end because it's not. Because if you get in there, 
I won't know what, you know, I have to go check it out, but if I've done everything right, there shouldn't be an error here. If you've done everything right, there shouldn't be an error on your install either. But remember, this is a personal web Moodle server. And I really can't get into all the uh, details on locking this thing down. As far as uh, you might want to try using uncomplicated firewall to help with that and know which ports Moodle uses. Uh, 22 for SSH is the server is using currently. Of course, Moodle will use port 80. Then if you're configuring mail, you've got to open those ports. And if you're configuring secure HTTP, you've got to I guess 443 but don't quote me on that so down here you'll see it says continue and so now you can put in your own username everything with a star you've got to add new password uh, first name is Mike user email address you've got to put in your email address and if you don't want to and you can allow everyone to see it or not I guess everyone's seeing it now I could have put anything in there and it used to be that you had to add the town but not aim more select a country I'm just going to pick United States simply because that's where I'm at. That helps you get your time zones and things like that correctly a little bit, but I guess those time zones should come in from the server. Put your language settings, and then you update your profile. Okay, now here password must at least have one digit and one non alphanumeric characters. Yes, I, I forgot about that. I use a simple password on the server simply because on these videos simply for typing reasons. So I think I've got everything there as far as the password's concerned. Click on update profile. So full site name you to Moodle video of course there's a short chain I'll just call it YT MV save changes and that's pretty much it uh, for setting up your own personal web server if you want to you can go down here to site administration and I think on under appearance you can pick up you know themes theme selector you can pick out a new theme or something like that you know click on change theme and you know pick one of these themes and they even have themes for the phones you pick whatever you know like use theme and that's fairly simple okay, that's pretty much it for installing Moodle as a personal web server and you can go ahead and create your own courses and see how that you know kind of play with it before you're actually working with students thank you